Dr. Christina Kabash, and I'm here to talk to you today about painful flat foot deformity. 20% of the population has flat feet, and it is not a problem unless it is associated with pain, and flat feet will no longer get you out of the military. This is an x-ray of a normal arch, and this is an x-ray of a patient with a flat foot. Posterior tibial tendon dysfunction is the most common cause of painful adult-acquired flat foot deformity. The posterior tibial tendon muscle belly runs down the back of the calf and then attaches to a bone at the top of the arch. This tendon is responsible for allowing you to come up on your toes. Clinical symptoms of progressive flat foot initially involve pain and swelling in the medial ankle followed by progressive collapse of the arch. Progressive collapse of the arches then leads to pain in the lateral ankle due to increased contact pressure from the foot angle. The feet also start to rotate out. A flat foot on one side only can actually cause a leg length discrepancy. So this is a, a full half body x-ray and as you can see here, this is the height of the normal ankle, and this is the height of the ankle with the arch collapse. So there's at least a one and a half centimeter difference. With that one and a half centimeter difference, if you look at the pelvis, you can clearly see the pelvic tilt and the curvature in the spine. So as the foot arch flattens on the ground, it causes the shin and thigh bones to twist inward, adding stresses on the knee. This can cause knee pain. Pronation is called a dynamic flat foot, and we've all heard of pronation. And what happens with pronation is that the arch rolls in as you push off. This strains that tendon that attaches to the inside of the arch and pinches the sinus tarsi. If you have a callus in this area of your big toe, you are a pronator. This is an example of a person walking on a treadmill who's a pronator, and as you can see, the ankle is rolling in, and when the ankle rolls in, it causes the inside of the big toe to propel the foot forward during push-off, causing that callus. So what happens as a posterior tibial tendon fails? There is pain with standing and walking. You are unable to do a single toe rise. You have a shorter stride with weaker push-off, and your balance suffers. Over time, the tendon starts to fray and get little rip and tears. This is caused by increases in weight, activity, a pronation type gait, and also valgus knee alignment. As the tendon degenerates and stretches, it becomes lengthened. The tendon rarely ruptures. If you think about a bungee cord, that as you continue to pull it, it gets the little frays and then never goes back to its original length, that's what happens to the tendon. Non-operative treatment of posterior tibial tendonitis uh, involves first treatment in a can boot to calm down the swelling and the pain. Sometimes an orthotic or an arch support can be used in the cam boot for added comfort. Rest is important, anti-inflammatories are important, immobilization in a boot for six to eight weeks is important. As the swelling and pain calm down, you can progress into orthotics with arch support. So this is an unsupported foot, and this is a foot with an arch support in, and you can see the alignment is straight. Uh, if you have lost the, the ability of the tendon to function, then wearing a Ritchie brace, which is hinged at the ankle, can also be very useful inside of a shoe or a sneaker. However, if you wait too long and arthritic stiff changes develop, then you're looking um, more at permanent bracing in this AFO Arizona style brace. This is an example of the foot out of the brace, and then this is an example of the foot alignment in the brace. So bracing of a flexible posterior tibial tendon usually uh, lasts about 14 months before you're able to come out of the brace and progress into an orthotic. However, not everybody can progress out of the brace, and then you have to make the choice, do you want to be in the brace for the rest of your life, which is a very good option for some people, or do you want to fix it? If you fix it before you develop arthritis, you can do a motion sparing surgery where you don't lose motion in any of your joints, and this involves cutting and shifting some bones and doing some tendon transfers. However, once you develop arthritis, motion in those joints is painful, so you do a triple arthrodesis or fusion. So the goals of a flat foot reconstruction are a mechanical and functional rebalancing of the foot. Soft tissue procedures alone have a high rate of failure, so it's a combination of soft tissue and bone.
fracture. For the soft tissue realignment, you take the tendon which bends the tips of the toes and runs out here, and you swing it around to where the posterior tibial tendon attaches, and you can either sew it together or remove the tendon entirely and just replace the tendon with the toe tendon. You then need to shift the heel, and as you can see here, the heel should be under the tibia, which it's not. So by shifting it in this direction, you bring it back under alignment in the tibia and uh, correct the ankle rolling in. Uh, sometimes if the foot has started to spin out, you may need to add a little extra wedge of bone to rotate the foot back in this direction and make the foot straight. If, however, you've developed arthritis, then you need to do something called a triple arthrodesis or infusion. And this fuses three joints, this talonavicular joint, the calcaneocuboid joint, and the subtalar joint. And this reconstructs the arch. Postoperative treatment of flat foot reconstruction is a mobilization in a splinter and cam for two weeks with strict elevation. After that, non-weight bearing in a cam boot for an additional four weeks, but you can start foot and ankle range of motion and showering. At six weeks after surgery, you can be walking in a cam boot with physical therapy. And at 10 weeks, you're back into flat cushion shoes or sneakers and can do low impact activities such as yoga, Pilates, stationary bike, swimming, and walking in your neighborhood. By six months, I usually have no restrictions on your activities. Uh, <clears throat> but for a full year after surgery, I do like you to be in a flat cushion shoe with an orthotic. For a very severe flat foot deformity, which has affected not only the three joints we discussed, but the ankle, <clears throat> there are surgeries that can be done, but this is considered a salvage surgery. So in summary, a progressive uh, flat foot deformity with increasing pain and significant loss of function over time will occur if left uncorrected or unbraced. Orthotics and bracing can be used to control or prevent symptoms. However, they will not correct the dysfunction except in the very early stages before deformity has occurred. Once deformity has occurred, the choice must be made between bracing and orthotics with activity modification versus reconstructive surgery. Flexible flat foot reconstruction retains motion at joints, but outcomes are not as consistent as they are with fusions. Thank you for watching this video.